know that there were close to 30 undercover uh, Metropolitan Police Department agents or officers. Uh, they have, uh, uh, because they do not, first of all, if there was heavy undercover presence and informants, as, as we already suspect, and in some cases know, they don't want those numbers to be known. Now, we know from some of the court filings that uh, several of them uh, participated and did things that protesters were charged with crimes for doing, assisting people over some of the barricades, uh, helping them get up on the steps, encouraging them to go into the Capitol. Uh, and in some cases, people are people are still in jail three years later awaiting uh, prosecution. What owes to that? Like what legal mechanism um, are the feds using? Well, pretrial detention is supposed to be highly unusual, only reserved for people that are so dangerous that they cannot assure the public safety through any means. Uh, we also know that there were there were informants in the crowd and uh, especially infiltrated and in following the Proud Boys, uh, special agents from FBI or Homeland Security. We have video from uh, journalist Bobby Powell that shows a, a man who certainly is kitted up like an, uh, an undercover agent, pulling a huge sheet of glass out of one of the Capitol windows and dropping it on the concrete or it crumbles into pieces and uh, then encouraging Bobby and others to break out the, the rest of the window and go inside. The doors open so people could get inside. Uh, and again, both were dressed as under, and undercover agents probably would dress and they've never been identified. Them up potentially 50 plus, maybe 60 uh, undercover agents. And they also use techniques, for instance, like, uh, like turning off the video on a body cam. Uh, in the case of uh, Sheriff's Deputy Ronald McAbee, uh, that's exactly what happened in his case uh, when he was first arrested. The evidence presented at his first appearance it did not have audio. Well, it turned out that that audio was pretty important. Uh, they were, he was accused of uh, assaulting a police officer. When the, the audio shows he was shielding him. He was on top of him. He was, and he told him, I'm one of you. I'm a sheriff's deputy. I'm going to help you. And screaming at the protesters not to lay hands on him. And yet... Uh, even when the audio was played at his trial, it didn't matter. Uh, he was still convicted of assaulting the man he was actually helping. You know, on the inside of the agency, how are they justifying these SWAT raids? Uh, they're really not. The whistleblowers that we profile in the film, Steve Friend, who uh, until last February was an FBI special agent, um, but he went on suspension rather than participate in a raid that he felt was unconstitutional. Again, it was a misdemeanor defendant. It was someone that uh, the FBI had spoken to, they'd have contact with, and uh, he felt uh, that was complete abuse of power, that they could have requested him to come in. And we've seen that. 